Uh, yeah, that is a water cooler. Yes, that's an AM3 platform. Yes, this is the Jiminy Show, and yes, we're going to water cool it. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, thanks for checking it out. I really do appreciate it. I would really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button down there. A lot of you guys have been hitting it. It's really cool. It's making me feel good and telling me that we are growing the channel. I will be doing more in front of the camera stuff as soon as my new camera comes. If you saw yesterday's video, you'll see why that didn't work out. Today is a vloggy style handheld. That way, if it stops syncing up, it won't really matter. But a handheld vloggy style build on my Leon Lee PC60 water-cooled AM3 build. Why? Why not? I have an extra freeze mod AM3, AM2, AM4. It's made to fit on anything because it's multi-fit multi, multi -fit with expansion areas. But I had it laying around because I accidentally ordered it by accident and I decided to keep it and put it on here. Right now it has a AMD Phenom X4, or Phenom 2 X4 925 or something in there, but I have a 1035 6 core coming just for fun. This is just going to become a HTPC. I've kind of abandoned the Xbox project for now. It just isn't going anywhere because I need parts. This one I had all the parts available for. So yes, what I'm doing is I'm going to be water cooling this. And the reason it's not in there is because the Leon Lee has a removable motherboard tray, which is awesome. Not a whole lot of cable management space, but we'll talk about that later. Let's go ahead and turn this a little bit so I can show you that it is running a single 120 millimeter radiator in push pull. That's just for no other reason than I just wanted to fill up this space. And I did remove the hard drive bracket. I left the ledge there, the lip and it could be bent back out and then the cage could be put back in, but it's never gonna happen. The other change I made was I did add USB 3.0s to the front here because, you know, why not? I did remove the front audio head jacks and the fire wire that was in there. Don't really ever use front audio and I wanted 3.0 jacks. Although, I don't know why, but for some reason I thought this one had USB 3.0 on the board, but it doesn't, so whatever. Whatever I wind up upgrading to, at least I'll have USB 3.0 in the case. And eventually I'll throw a different motherboard in here and it'll just kind of get upgraded as time goes by. Maybe if I find a cheap Ryzen system, something with a newer board that has USB 3.0 and NVMe capabilities. And yeah, that's an MSI uh, heatsink on there because I don't know where the original went to. So the Northbridge is cooled by the wrong cooler. Eh, whatever. First thing I need to do is actually take out that radiator and clean the inside of the case a little bit more and then we will start putting in parts. Still going down and dirty. Number one, I wanted to point out that yes, this is a reservoir pump combo. However, the pump is pretty bad in it. It's going to be quite noisy for a little while. I need to figure out something. I'm thinking that I'm just going to use this as a reservoir and just mount a pump down here in the bottom but I need to figure it out because I have an old pump laying around, but I'd have to get it all set up. So give me a second, I'll come back. Next update, I found my little pump. It's not a great pump, but it's not going to be cooling a very high powered CPU. But as you can see, I have the pump is no longer plugged in and I'm not using the out from the original pump. That was where the water came out and then it would go into wherever. Instead, this reservoir has two drains. So I'm using one of the drains down into the pump. The pump will go from here up to the CPU, which I need to install the tray now. I'm gonna put the power supply in first and then I will get all that wired up. As you can see, I'm using some of the wire management for this stuff. I'm using the original front panel stuff and then this will all get plugged in. Hello. And for the power, I'm using this Thermaltake TR2 600 watt that I bought for $5 and it's brand new, never been used before. And I'll show it to you once I pull it out of the box. So yeah, like I said, brand new, out of the package, never been used before, clean as a whistle, too many cables. Hopefully I can hide them up there a bit because I do have a Blu-ray player up there and I'll show you why it's all the way at the top when we get to it. But yeah, this is gonna go up in here get bolted in and then we will start running on some cables and then put the motherboard in. Yay! Na -na. Yeah, that's uh, 
That's late 80s wiring right there. That's uh, or late 90s wiring. I did uh, secure the three and a half inch because you don't want that vibrating around, but the SSD nobody gives a crap about. But as you can see, I've got all the runs run, run with the run, run, and the run, run going in and out the correct way. So we should have good flow. I've just kind of used a cable tie to pull up all those Molex. All of the connectors are connected. All the fans are connected. So next thing to do is move it over to my other desk and plug it in and power it up and see if it explodes. Oh, there is a wireless card in this one. It's one of the ones I got out of that cheap ass bundle. So hopefully it works. There we go. Now we're in the BIOS. Took a minute. I had everything plugged into the wrong thing. So I have this thing overclocked to four or something, I think. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and boot into it. I just wanted to make sure all of my boot settings were the same. I did remove the front grill for that fan, but I don't really care. In terms of temperatures, it's not too bad. That's at 100% usage right now. Uh, 1.2 some or other bolts. I don't even know what it's running at right now. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. Look at that, 1.7 volts. Holy crap. Uh, we're going to turn that down in a second. And uh, yeah, it seems to be running pretty good. So uh, yeah, what I'll do is I will go back and uh, tone it back. Wondered why it actually jumped that high, but uh, yeah. So it's the next day, it's not 100% done, but as you can see it's had one significant mod and that I've added a tempered glass side panel to it. That's the old uh, aluminum side panel, that's a tempered glass one. Because I've also added LEDs, because yeah, early 2000s style bro. I am going to be grabbing a 1055T. I think it's a 1055T from another computer that's upstairs and popping it in here and testing it and seeing what happens. And I do have a fan for the back there. However, I got to clean it because it's horrendous. Came out of another computer and it's actually the right size, so that'll be good. And then I'm going to work on the wiring a little bit more. I wanted to get the computer up and running and running correctly before I worried about all that. But as you can see, yeah, it looks kind of cool, and we'll talk about how I did that later. As you can see, there's little gaps and stuff, but uh, that's a NZXT S340 Elite panel that's attached to the side of a Lian Lee PC60, so, you know, don't give me crap. But, uh, yeah, I think it came out pretty good. LEDs around three sides, and they're all connected, and the connector is inside the case because why not and uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll do some testing and thermals and I'll probably swap out that 650 I think that's a 650 in there, in there for like a 1050 Ti or something and we'll see what kind of numbers it produces so yay so after some cable management looks a lot better in there not perfect obviously because if I had the drive bays in there the drives would be over here and they'd be completely cleaned up and then I would have been able to hide the PCIe for the graphics card a little bit better but it overall looks pretty good especially considering this case really doesn't have any room for cable management and from back here yeah looks pretty good I have the 24 pin wrapped over there because also on this board the 24 pin is over here instead of over there so that didn't help but I have the 4 pin or the 8 pin but it's only using 4 pins because this board is weak it is kind of tucked up under there with a couple of cable management attachment points same thing with all the Molex is up in there between the pump or the reservoir and the blu-ray player so that's out of the way and then down here you just see the SSD which is just kind of hanging out because I just didn't feel like attaching it any better because I'm going to be using my other SSD instead of this one. This one just has an operating system on it now to verify that everything works. But for a free case, motherboard that I've had forever that I got for free, free processor, tons of parts. I think the only thing I actually paid for was the tubing and that radiator and I have like 20 bucks and all that and I've used that tubing on other stuff and the radiator can be used on many things so now I have... 120, 240, 280, and 360 millimeter radiators. So I'm good to go there. But yeah, that plus the tempered glass mod equals a computer that I can be proud of for a little free HTPC that I built. And it is an HTPC because unlike most of my other computers, this one has a hat that falls down, but also 
has a Blu-ray drive, so I can watch Blu-rays. So while I'm editing this, it just occurred to me that in the beginning of the video I said we'd be talking about why the Blu-ray player is all the way up here, and it is a Blu-ray player because, you know, if you're going to have an HD PC, you might as well be able to play Blu-rays. But let me pop off this front panel, and I will show you why it's at the top. And I love this case. It's so easy to work on. But by removing this blocking plate, it allows me to access the top of the reservoir so I can fill it and add fluid and do whatever I need to, as well as the fact that it allows me to pull it out too. That's why these tubes are longer, is so that when I need to, I can pull it out and then drain it by tilting the whole thing forward. And the reason that's important is because this does not have a drain set up for it. I need to get one set up, probably put something down here, but I haven't done that yet because I'm missing a extra drain fitting. So as soon as I get one with the ball valve, I will get that put in there. So yeah, that's the reason the Blu-ray player is up at the top. Plus I don't want the Blu-ray underneath fluids. So, and then I popped out those two and a half inch drive bay covers because they actually don't have anything to attach to. It's missing the bracket inside. So I actually have to glue them in and I'm working on that now. So yeah. So yeah, that's it. If you like that video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like some of the things I did do it, like cheap tempered glass mod. There are other ways to do it where I could have used the original aluminum side panel, but I didn't want to do that because I don't feel like drilling into that panel as well. I will be doing an update on this one after I put the 6 core in it to see if a 1055 is still usable in 2020. Probably not, but we'll see what happens. And yeah, so the new camera comes uh, tomorrow or yesterday when you saw this or who knows what day it is. But hopefully that means I can start doing some regular filming again and then we don't have to worry about sync issues. So that's it. I'm out of here. Comment, subscribe, like, use my Amazon affiliate links, and as always... I'll talk to you later.